Before I uh, turn this over to Gene, I'm going to add something that I'm not sure even he knows. But this group that we have here, notice how I avoided certain words like organization and that sort of thing. But at any rate, it came from what he's talking about and going to be talking about today. Uh, Pete Madison visited over there at Ocean Rock side and came back and and uh, this was just shortly after the date that you just saw up there that he started uh, at the Sunshine Cafe, right? Court? You were there uh, in Cathedral City and with 11 people and uh, there are times when we couldn't even fit in here. So we do a great credit to the to the um, Oceanside group. And so without any further ado, I'd like to turn this over to the team. <coughs> well, they asked me to uh, jump out of the cake, and since I'm going to be busy doing that, uh, I brought some help uh, from a select to introduce uh, Ted Ballas, T.G. Ballas, um, U.S. Uh, Air Force uh, veteran from uh, the Vietnam era. 190 combat missions to DFCs, 13 air medals, uh, flying F-4s in the late 60s. Uh, he is currently one of the co-founders for the California Pacific Airlines that is starting up at uh, Palomar and it's making the news uh, out there in San Diego. Uh, he's a commercial instrument uh, helicopter rating, uh, enjoys golf with his grandsons, and is a uh, assistant district chairman uh, for the Boy Scouts out there. And I also want to bring up uh, Janelle and uh, Susie. And so all four of us are going to be presenting. And uh, a man has got to know his limitations. I've only been with the group for 20 years. They've got me beat for more. And they know more about who's who in the zoo about this group uh, and this side. And I just have to pay respects. Uh, Janelle, uh, you started with 70, uh, in 1978 at Denny's, so at Waiters. I started, I started originally at Denny's in 78, and I started waiting on the original four that founded the Old Globe Pilots in mid 80s, I think it was, early 80s. 84. 84, okay. Well, okay. you know, <laughs> but I was, I was the original waitress for the original four. Oh, <laughs> I started taking care of the old bull pilots in 95. When I started taking care of them, there were 12 of them. And now there's what, over 400? This is one of the most amazing groups I've ever met in my life. And I commend all of you for all your service and thank you so much. So if you can just stand off the side and we'll get started. And I'll all right. Oh, let's we'll start off here. Ted, this is all you. Okay. Well, I'm not Chet Huntley. And I'm not David Brinkley. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not Chet Huntley and David Brinkley uh, Tonight Show or uh, Tonight News. Uh, but, uh, but however, I must tell you that uh, there is something that Chet Huntley and uh, David Brinkley end their program with. Good and uh, so if I go over time, you're going to hear that. Anybody know what that is? Good night, Chuck. Good night. Good night. Yeah, there you go. Good night, David. Good night, Chad. Yeah. You right? Okay. And so that's what, that'll be my cue when they say, when he says to me, good night, TG, then I'll let go. Uh, and a little bit about uh, this. Uh, I was invited to join Obo Pilots uh, in, uh, in the mid-90s, uh, about the time that, uh, that uh, Susie was coming to uh, uh, to Denny's there in Oceanside. And by the way, we're, uh, we're Denny's in Oceanside, and it's off of El Camino Real and 78. If you're in the area, we meet 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock, you know, we end promptly at 9 o'clock, or when the bullshit hits your eyeballs, whichever comes first. Okay? And I think most of you know what I'm talking about there. But uh, on the screen here, uh, this is our challenge coin. Anybody know what a challenge coin is? Raise your hand if you know what a challenge coin is. Okay, about half of you. 
the challenge coin is that we have these made up and uh, and you can purchase them uh, I think they're seven dollars or something like that and if you get three you get them for six or five or six dollars if you get them three at a time and uh, and the idea is that if they challenge you you know uh, if we're having a social and, and they, they challenge you to bring out your challenge coin and you don't have it you buy the drink right and that's the way it is I think in bring you Marines or Navy or Air Force pilots or Army pilots and it doesn't and, say Oceanside so yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can challenge any one of you. I'll get well, Gene and I will get drinks before we get out of here. Right? <laughs> through. Okay. So uh, now <clears throat> we, as as was indicated, we started in 1985 with four P 47 pilots meeting at Denny's at the Oceanside Denny's, and we gradually grew from there. Uh, uh, Janelle and Susie mentioned 400. That's the actual number that are on our rosters. Uh, I, I don't know how it's how it's shaping up here, but last year we lost 16 of our members, 16 in one year, 16. So we're getting you know it's the World War II uh, pilots that we're losing uh, rapidly, and uh, and one of them that we lost is Admiral Dick Lyon right here. And uh, uh, Admiral Dick Lyon, uh, does anybody know who he is? Admiral Dick Lyon was the first. Admiral Navy SEAL in the history of the Navy SEALs. He was the first Admiral. Uh, he's uh, a remarkable individual, was also the mayor of Oceanside, and, uh, and he, uh, prior to World War II, he was on the swimming team for Yale University, and uh, they defeated the Japanese in the uh, medley relay. And uh, and they were tickled pink that they did so, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, for what what occurred at at, uh, uh, at Hickam in Hawaii, and so uh, he was a marvelous member. I had the opportunity to take my uncle and my father on the honor flight to Washington D.C., and we were on the flight with Dick Lyon. And a uh, and a side note, real very quickly that I want to tell you is that when we got there. We ended up the tour at the uh, Naval Yard. How many have been to the Naval Yard? In, you know, in, in, the, yeah, in Washington. You know, we got a fabulous base exchange there, and we couldn't wait to get there and, and buy things cheap and everything. And we get there, and there was a sign on the door that said, "Due to inclement weather, this exchange will be closed for the Saturday and Sunday." And I said to Dick, "I said, Dick, what the hell is going on that the Navy would close the base exchange because of a little bit of rain?" And it, it looked like today, only there was a light drizzle, you know, and, uh, and I said, I can't believe this. And he said, well, wouldn't happen on my watch, is exactly what he said. So uh, we've got a roster of over 400, and we, uh, we gather between 55 and 60, uh, and I, I, I don't know how many you have this morning, probably, what, 45? 40 or 45, yeah. Uh, we, we pack them in, don't we, girls? <laughs> And, uh, and then he said, here we are, the girls are serving. Uh, the one thing that, that I can assure you, uh, any document is, uh, is, it gets the seal of approval only if it's coffee stained. And so if it's not coffee stained, it's not an original document at uh, Obo Pilots. Thanks to our girls, our, our waitresses. Uh, amazing visitors. Uh, Joe Peterburg shot down Walter Shook. This is Walter right here. This is Joe Peterburs. Uh, Peterburs <clears throat> was in a uh, P-51. Uh, Walter Shook was in an ME-262. Here's the painting right here of him shooting it down, <coughs> shooting him down. Uh, there's Walter getting ready to get out on the wing and bail out. And uh, I can't, because we have ladies in the audience, I can't tell you what he said over the radio, but uh, it went to something to the effect of you you have a lucky yank, <laughs> he said to him, because this P-51 had shot down the first jet, first uh, German jet. And, uh, uh, and then the Night Witches, the 588th Russian bomber pilots right here, uh, a little note on that, we had a member that you're going to see a photo of later on, Court Stark. And Court and I, uh, I was running Olympic Resort, 
we used to have an Olympic resort, by the way, over here at Dave Palm Drive in Ramon, here in, uh, in, the, in the desert. And uh, uh, we had an Olympic resort in Carlsbad, where Lowe's is now, at the corner of El Camino Real and Palomar Airport Road. And, uh, and we put up this group of these uh, Russian bomber pilots, uh, and, and this is the photo that they sent, you know, and I said to court, I said, court, we've got to check out these checks, chicks, and, and neither one of us were married. Uh, I lost my wife to cancer, and, and, uh, and court was in and out of relationships for as long as I can remember, yes, right, yes. <laughs> And uh, But the night witches visited, and, uh, and court and I couldn't wait. And then when they came in, any one of them, could take on any three of you guys, you know. I mean, they, were, they were huge, you know, and Burnley and everything. And so, Court and I were a little disappointed until we met their translator, uh -oh. and their translator was absolutely a knockout uh, to die for, gorgeous gal. So, Court says, "Hey, you know, we, you know, we got to." We got to take her in the bar and you know and you know, wine and dine her and everything you know and see what you know see if she's got any girlfriends and I said great idea Cor great idea so so we went in there and we started drinking shots of vodka and then she drove Court and I home because, because and that's as far as we got with this uh, this gorgeous translator because. We couldn't keep up with her. I mean, she was just putting her away like water, you know. And Court and I, after about the fifth or sixth shot, we were just blitzed, you know. And, uh, so she carried her out, carried us out to the bus, and took us took us both home. And uh, then the uh, Turpitz raid. Uh, this is the this is the uh, uh, German Turpitz battleship in a ford in uh, in Norway, and. Uh, and this RAF, I, RAF pilot, Tony Iverson, and uh, Jeff Watkins, in this photo, uh, were responsible for the attack and the sinking of the Turpets. Now, Kurt Schultz, right up here, I call him Sergeant Schultz, and he says, Malice, he says, I was a lieutenant. Why do you keep calling me Sergeant Schultz? And I said, I know nothing. <laughs> so, I don't think he ever knew. I, obviously, he didn't watch the show. But, uh, but anyway, Kurt Schultz uh, uh, used to bring uh, Walter Schuch and, uh, and other uh, aces over from Germany, including Gunter Rahl. We'll talk about him in a moment. And, but the sinking of the Turpets, uh, Schultz, uh, Kurt Schultz and his squadron were on duty to protect the Turpets from any raids by the British. So the British came in with their Lancasters, uh, right Gene? They were Lancasters, weren't they? Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and, and these two were the pilots. And they came in, uh, and, and I always tell Kurt, I said, uh, Kurt, is it true that you were at Denny's in Norway uh, and you got there five minutes late because you had another cup of coffee you know, <laughs> or had to pay your bill? <laughs> And he says, oh, Ted, why do you keep telling people that story? <laughs> but, uh, but the interesting thing about the sinking of the Turpets is it was not a direct hit. Uh, Kurt told me that, that when they got there and the hull was upside down, you know, in the water, and the crew members were, you know, all around the ship, that the Lancasters came in and they hit, a, they hit the water uh, with their bombs, short of the ship, but it was like a tidal wave, and it rolled the ship oh. upside down, <laughs> and, and, you know, dumped everybody and everything, you know, into the water, and, uh, and, and bitterly cold water, I might add. Uh, anybody from Norway? Any Norwegians out here? And, uh, and, uh, and it, it, it was not a direct hit. Of course, it was an easy direct hit for the second wave of uh, bombers that came through. And, uh, and, uh, and I said to Kurt, I said, Kurt, weren't you a little worried about the reception that you were going to get from Hitler after, he, after they lost one of their prime battleships? And he said, uh, are you kidding? We were short, so short on pilots, you know, that they immediately demoted us and then put us in newer aircraft. <laughs> so, okay, and 
Now to Ray Tolliver. Ray Tolliver was our, our fearless leader uh, in the group. He was one of the original four right up here. Uh, Ray uh, was a very interesting fellow because he had uh, started flying in 1935. Uh, he he uh, retired as a U.S. Air Force Colonel. Uh, he had he had written dozens of books uh, of all different types, and uh, and he had had flown in uh, in over uh, almost 200 different type of aircraft. He was uh, he was uh, pilot command on over 100 uh, different aircraft types, and uh, and he was also stationed at Wright Patterson Air Force Base, and uh, and, uh, and you know and, and when he was with us. He was on the board of directors for their uh, uh, Hall of Fame up at Wright Path. So uh, uh, he partied with Lufthansa pilots. Uh, uh, Hans Scharf, who was the interrogator. Uh, the interesting story about that is uh, Ray uh, wrote a book about Hans Scharf, the interrogator. And, uh, and incidentally, as a side note, Hans's son, Chris, uh, is active in our group today. In fact, I just saw him yesterday at yeah, 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 our meeting. But uh, he wrote the, uh, Ray wrote the book, The Interrogator, right here. That's the book. And, uh, and when Hans read the final proof, he was talking to Ray on the phone. He hung up the phone and he died. Oh. Yeah. So he was just brought to tears, you know, that that he had done such a wonderful job uh, on the book. And, uh, and I got that from Hans' son, Chris, said that uh, he died the, the day that Ray uh, talked to him on the phone about the final uh, proof. And, uh, and then it went, to, it went to press both in German and in English. Okay, anything else? Uh, He's going to talk about flying that in Germany. That's uh, her apartment. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is the, uh, the book that Ray wrote. Uh, this was one of his best sellers too. 85 printings. Yeah, 85 printings uh, uh, of this book, The Blonde Knight of Germany, uh, Hartman, and, uh, uh, and he did a yeah, very well received book. <coughs> Steve Bassanos. Uh, has anybody had the opportunity to meet Steve? You know, he, we just lost him the last, about a year ago. And uh, Steve Bassanos, uh, I'm Greek. I'm uh, Ted Ballas, and he's Steve Bassanos, and uh, he was a Greek immigrant, immigrant jump ship uh, in 1939. Uh, he got his uh, pilot training in, in, uh, in New York, uh, was <clears throat> had to pay seven dollars an hour for that. He he washed dishes at different Greek restaurants in uh, in New York in order to raise enough money to take uh, to take pilot training lessons. Uh, later on, he joined the Eagle Squadron as a Greek citizen. Uh, side note on that, he's the only uh, military type that was uh, naturalized, you know, in a foreign country. He was in France at the time, in a foreign country, and he was naturalized as a citizen of the United States uh, overseas. Uh, he was interviewed by Walter Cronkite in uh, 1942. Uh, uh, he uh, left the military as a full colonel. Uh, he flew. Uh, he was a double ace. He he uh, he he had ten to his credit. He had ten victories. And uh, and this is the the book, The Flying Greek. And there's also a movie uh, coming out uh, right now. They're they're about halfway through the the filming of it. Uh, the aerial shots are filmed in over Ramona. And, uh, and I was told by Steve and, uh, and, uh, and his uh, significant other that uh, that, that countryside is, is not uh, a whole lot different in Ramona, the rocky terrain, you know, and kind of deserty, uh, as, as it was uh, when, uh, when he was in, where he was raised in Greece. So, Jay Walker. I could, we could spend an entire program on Jay Walker. Uh, 
Actually, we had they had they had to they had to serve uh, 30 missions in the B-17s in the 388th, uh, 384th. Uh, uh, they had to serve 30 missions before they could return. Uh, Jay, who became flight lead. Uh, uh, served uh, about 32 missions in the uh, in the B-17. Now uh, we lost Jay, and you are not going to believe this story. I'll tell you, this is a tearjerker. We had a raffle, and I, in fact, I was one of the winners of the raffle, and and we were going to get a flight in a B-24 when the Collins Foundation came into Palomar Airport, and so. Uh, at the request of somebody wealthy, you know, in our organization, he buys 10 rides. And so then he, we, we do a drawing, you know, of all the members that want to get in to it. All they do is write their name in. We have a drawing, and I, my name was drawn, and, uh, and so was Jay's name was drawn. And, uh, and so... <clears throat> Uh, I had been, I used to put up the Collins Foundation pilots when they came into Palomar at, uh, at Olympic Resort at no cost to them. So they used to give me a half a dozen rides. And I had, and I had ridden in the B-17, the B-24 numerous times. So I gave it to my daughter. It was her birthday. And I gave it to my daughter. And she went down there to either fly in the B-17 or the B-24 at Palomar Airport. Well, that particular day, the, uh, uh, he had a stroke, uh, Jay, uh, long before that, Jay had a stroke, and he was unable to get in the B-24. They would have had to lift him up with a forklift to put him in, and then, you know, how do you get him out if you have to get him out if they crash on the runway or something like that. So, so they said, Mr. Walker... I'll tell you what, we're going to have a flight in a few minutes in the B-17. He says, oh, I'd rather go in the B-17 anyway, because he used to fly the B-17. And so they put him in the B-17, and he flew in the B-17, and he died the next day. Oh. <laughs> and he did exactly what he wanted to do. Instead of 32 missions, he got 33. Uh -huh. In the, in the B-17, because he died the, the very next day. So a remarkable story. He was business partners with Jack Webb and Ed, and Ed Sullivan. Uh, he owned 57 Lincoln Mercury dealerships throughout the United States. He dated Audrey Hepburn right here. And uh, did you want to say something about Audrey? Uh, well, uh, he was in the room in Switzerland when she passed away. And uh, he was the only one allowed in the room uh, when she was dying. So. And then we throw one up there too. It is uh, asked if I asked him when I was taking him home from uh, one of the breakfasts uh, if he ever dated Betty White. He says I did her once. <laughs> <laughs> and he introduced JFK to Marilyn Monroe. And uh, uh, we don't want to get too deep into that. <laughs> we'll keep that. We'll keep that just in this room. <laughs> so uh, and on. Uh, here's here's Jay with Ed Sullivan in New York in the late fifties. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention about Jay Walker is that he was like this. He was, he was, has has been and, and will always be uh, in the heart of uh, uh, Joe Biden. He is uh, real close friends with Joe Biden, and he called me one day and he said, "T.J., you got to do me a favor." He said, "Joe Biden's brother, younger brother, is here, you know, and he's a pain in the ass." and my significant other is going to leave me if I don't get him out of the house. So I'm going to put him over at Olympic. And he says, I'm going to give you a check for uh, $300, you know. And he said, when the $300 is gone, kick his ass out. And I said, okay, you know, I, I, got, I got my walking orders. Well, in exactly three days, in three days, he had gone through, blown through the $300. And I came in and I brought his name up and it was $390, you know. And I had told my staff, I'd taken him in a room and told him, hey, this guy's $300 and he's not to be able to charge anywhere in any department. Well, he's buying drinks for chicks at the bar and he's taking girls in for uh, dinner and everything else and it went up to $390. Yeah, okay. But... Uh, 
anyway, we got rid of him. And, uh, and Jay had uh, tried to pay me $100 and so I wouldn't take his money. And uh, after I ripped up three checks, you know, he finally said, well, obviously I'm going to get nowhere. So uh, this is uh, Bill Ryder. <clears throat> he was a B-26 uh, pilot, he shot down over uh, in, uh, near France before the liberation of Paris. Uh, he, was, he was literally in the parachute when the plane blew up. Uh, he uh, was compromised by a French trader and, uh, and along with 110 crew members that uh, shipped on a on box, box cars and incarcerated at uh, Buchenwald uh, and he was two months there. Uh, he was rescued and then shipped off to uh, Stalag 3. Uh, they did a forced march to Mooseburg and uh, and he was uh, uh, a, a feature story. Do we have that copy? It was a feature story in, uh, in a local newspaper that we have uh, in Oceanside. It's called The Story, isn't it? Oh, the paper. The paper, the paper. Okay. Fred Ferrazano. <coughs> Ferrazano. Uh, Fred was uh, a remarkable uh, Navy uh, uh, pilot. He uh, flew F-4s as I did. Uh, had over 500 uh, traps or carrier landings. Uh, he's the guy that mined uh, Haiphong Harbor, and this is no no joke, without permission. <laughs> and uh, he was also the board chairman for California Avocados at uh, Lyndon and uh, Fallbrook uh, near Oceanside. And uh, a tremendous individual. And uh, and he, we he and I had something in common. He did night missions over Haiphong. I did nine missions uh, over Hanoi, and uh, uh, and uh, we had a lot to talk about, uh, you know, because at night you saw them shooting at you, and and boy, over Haiphong and Hanoi, the tracers were just coming up, you know, every which direction. Okay, Jack Kellogg, uh, yes, he's a descendant of the Serial family. Uh, flew B-17s in the 15th Air Force. Uh, he was shot down over Czechoslovakia. Uh, on a radio uh, Blackenheimer. <clears throat> uh, he was caught in civilian clothes and they wanted to execute him. Uh, but uh, I, I believe it was Sharf that, that saved him, wasn't it? I don't think he was interviewed. Uh, he was. Like Sharf? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Was, the guys that Sharf interviewed were in Germany and he was in Hungary. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. And. Uh, uh, but he was accused as a spy and held for 40 days. Then he was moved also to Stalag 3. Uh, uh, and, and the FBI interviewed him in, uh, in 1946 uh, to, uh, uh, to search for war criminals, to information on war criminals uh, for the uh, war criminal trials in Nuremberg. Dick Rossi, uh, six victories. Uh, uh, he was a uh, uh, fighter pilot for hire, <laughs> and he got six hundred dollars a month plus uh, five hundred dollars free plane he shot down. Uh, he was uh, with the Flying Tigers, and uh, and he flew for twenty five years with the Flying Tigers. And uh, one of the and uh, side note, started this hungry tiger uh, restaurant chain. Uh, flew over the hump for seven hundred thirty five sorties, and. Uh, and like I say, uh, because he was a civilian, uh, he was paid uh, the six hundred dollars a month and five hundred dollars for each plane shot down. Which Next. has been a lot of money in nineteen. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, to to give you an example, <laughs> when I was flying over Laos, if the CIA picked us up, you know, out of the jungle, they got an eighteen hundred dollar bonus each crew member. If it was a helicopter, or uh, you know, they, they and they picked us up, they got eighteen hundred dollars. They used to shoot at each other. <laughs> so they say he's mine. You know? They shoot at each other. I mean, true story. True story. Okay. The story that, that Dick uh, would tell is that when he was in China, uh, they were commanded by a, a general Bissell, that they didn't like very much. So he. And his fellow pilots taught the Chinese children to say "piss on Bissell." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lou Eldridge, a great guy. Uh, uh, he uh, 
he was a test pilot in 104. Right here you see the 104 in the background. And then this is an ad for MG. And they did a television ad too with, uh, with Lude in, a, in an MG here driving down the road. Uh, special breed of man, I'll tell you, uh, girls, wouldn't you agree that Lude was just a remarkable oh, he, he individual? He was a gentleman. Awesome. Total was gentleman, just yeah. Just, wonderful uh, man. Just wonderful man. Uh, and uh, we'll certainly miss him. Want to talk about Guthrie Wall or? Yeah, you can. No, go ahead. You got the mic. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he used to put up Gunter Rall. Gunter Rall had, help me out, 300 and I think 314 victories. Uh, Gunter Rall had. Wasn't he the number three um, top German ace? Yeah. Yeah. 314, is that right? It's a big number. Yeah. yeah. Over 300. Eric uh, Hartman was the top guy. Yeah. He had uh, over 300 victories, Gunter Rall did, and Lou used to put him up in his house. And then generally, uh, when uh, when Gunter would come over, uh, he would bring you know another couple with him, or or friends of the family, or whatever, or relatives, uh, and I would put them up at Olympic Resort. Uh, and uh, and so Lou was Mr. Hospitality, and would put up uh, Gunter Rall. And uh, uh, okay. I was going to say one other thing. The, in the, do you want to describe the seating order? Remember, it used to be Ray. Go ahead. Well, they had. It wasn't assigned seating, but they they all had their spot. And um, so, at one of the long tables towards the back, there would be uh, Ray Tolliver and Kurt, and then Luke would sit the crying over across from him, and Jay would sit over here, and it was and like Fred across from him. Well, and and then. Uh, Dick would have his spot, and it's like somebody would come in, and you go, uh-uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 they came in, and somebody yeah. was sitting there. And, 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 this, and this, you know, this table would be, you know, the good table, or the, you know, those were the the main guys who would sit at one particular table. I think it was Jim when Jim came in, and he said, "Why do they always sit at the same table?" I said, "You take that up with them." <laughs> Okay. Kurt Schultz. Oh boy. Uh, Kurt's hanging in there. He's got colon cancer. And I, I, I just went and visited with him a couple of weeks ago at his home. And uh, he's not doing uh, very well at all. Uh, oftentimes, we would have breakfast at Denny's with, with the girls. We'd have breakfast at Denny's. And then later on, we'd have lunch at a German restaurant over in Vista. And then we would go to Kurt's house for cocktails <laughs> and more BS. <laughs> and, uh, and Kurt is a fanatic uh, at detail, at small details, as most Germans are. And so what I would do is, you're going to see a picture in a minute of uh, a Russian. And our, the Russian was our bartender. Okay, <laughs> Alex was our bartender. And so Alex would be back there getting drink orders, you know, and mixing drinks and everything. And then I would look around for Kurt, and I'd go over to Kurt's refrigerator, and he had all of these German beers in a line, okay? And then Corona and, and uh, Dos Equis, you know, and stuff like that. I'd go in there, and I'd mix them up, turn the labels around and everything, you know? And then I would wait, and then, and then Alex would get, be getting somebody's order, and somebody would come up and say, hey, could I have a you know, uh, uh, what's your what, what, or well, I mean, just yeah, the different kinds of German beers. But yeah. the, it was the vodka drinks. That, yeah, uh, and so and so and so he'd say, "Oh yeah, I'll get you your your German beer," you know. And he'd go over there and he opened the refrigerator and he said, "Damn it, TG!" Because <laughs> he knew I'd been in there room, move, moving the labels around. The other thing uh, about Kurt is. Uh, one day I had to go to a board meeting for the airline, and uh, and I was in a big hurry, you know. And I I wolfed down a cup of coffee, greeted everybody, wolfed down a cup of coffee, and I said, Kurt, I need a big favor. I said, when when Janelle uh, brings the the bill, you know, for my coffee, here here's two dollars, you know, but I left a tip. 
I left a tip for her, you know, too. And so Kurt says, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, let me, let me write this down. I said, Kurt, no, I don't have time. I've got to get to the meeting right now. And that's why I left. Okay. Yeah, so the, the following week, following week, he had an itemized letter for me, and I thought it was an invitation to, Gunter, to meet Gunter Rall. No. I opened up the letter, and out flew this change. And I, and I looked at the letter, and it said, To Captain Theodore G. Ballas, United States Air Force, from Lieutenant Kurt Schultz, you know, Luftwaffe. And it said, uh, Render to Lieutenant uh, Kurt Schultz, $2, uh, a bill enclosed for one cup of coffee, dollar thirty-seven, change sixty-four cents. And I said, Jesus, Kurt, why don't you just give it to the waitress? Why did you go through all this trouble? He said, TG, I'm going to put some order in your life. <laughs> <laughs> That's Kurt Schultz. Uh, but he's, uh, uh, he had three victories against the Russians in uh, Finland and Norway, immigrated to the U.S. in 1950, very successful real estate, owned a, owned a large uh, 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 brokerage. Uh, brokerage. Yeah, he was a broker himself, but he also owned a strip center uh, in Vista, California. Did many TV interviews and, uh, and uh, and then it was the, in the Petsamo uh, Scramble, which is depicted in this uh, painting by Robert Bailey. Uh, he signed a lot of prints. He did, uh, he did Gene's references for his top secret clearance. So the, uh, the FBI, I said, hey, if you want to do something cool, you need to go check out my best friend, Kurt. So the FBI goes and interviews Kurt for the last 10 years for my for my tickets. And, uh, so anyway, I wonder if I'm the only uh, guy that's had a German fighter pilot be the reference. <laughs> Norm Aiken, uh, uh, unbelievable. He, Norm flew in the Eagle Squadron and P-51s. Uh, <clears throat> he was in the fourth fighter group and he shot down over Hanover on a strafing run on a train. Uh, he was strafing a train and got knocked down. Uh, uh, he. He seriously thinks that Hans Scharf, uh, the interrogator, uh, saved his life by ordering his gun camera footage to be used as evidence to prove that he was not that he was not strafing civilians, as the as they had alleged, and they were going to take him out and and, uh, and shoot him in a firing squad. Uh, he was a saw at three. He escaped from a forced march to Mooseburg, and uh, just real, very quickly, uh, he was going through the snow. He, they, they came to a village and they had these young teenagers that were guarding them when they were going and they were taking them to Nuremberg and it was, in, it was at the end of the war and Hitler was going to try to consolidate all of the American troops, uh, American fighter pilots in one, in one jail in Nuremberg and exchange them for his, uh, not freedom, but for him uh, not being uh, be, being saved from the Nazi uh, from the uh, Russians, and uh, and so when they got to this village, uh, this this teenager was sitting there having a cigarette, trying to warm his, warm himself. It was colder than hell, and uh, and they uh, and so uh, Moose uh, Norm's cellmate looked at him and shook his head like this, and then and then Norm knew. There was time to leave, you know, and because they didn't want to go to Nuremberg, and uh, and so uh, they got in line and they got at the tail end of the line and they looked over and this kid was still smoking his cigarette, and warm in his hands, and had his a rifle leaning against this building, and so when they were marching down this the road, they took a hard left and started running. Well, then the kid th threw his cigarette down and grabbed his rifle and ran over there and he was afraid to shoot him. Because he was afraid that they that they would know that he let him escape, and they escaped. But they were cold, they were hungry, and they were miserable. And they heard some tanks, and they thought they were German tanks, and they were going to surrender. And it turned out to be Patton. No, it was Patton. And Patton put him in a staff car and sent him to Paris to the Ritz. <laughs> and so they went from freezing cold, you know, and hungry, and having been in, in prison for years, 
and uh, and they were at the at the Ritz in uh, Paris, uh, drinking uh, uh, French champagne and and eating food, um, um, amazing food. Alexander, help me out. Parabini. Padubni. Yeah. This guy is a character. Here he is right here. And the interesting thing in this picture is this guy, uh, Mac McNichol, is, was in the CIA. So we wanted to talk about Mac for, for some time at, uh, with his picture, you know, but he won't give us much information, neither Gene nor I, you know, but we know he was in the CIA. And uh, he was flying with Air America out of Tachikawa, Japan, uh, when I was a teenager in, in high school. Over there in Tachikawa, by the way. So here's Alexander, our bartender, by the way, for, uh, and uh, uh, he was a Soviet Union test pilot, uh, uh, awarded a special medal by President Gor uh, Gorbachev uh, for developing the first uh, takeoff of the <clears throat> Anatomyov uh, 124. And uh, teach you just a second. What I got from Alex this last week was literally tons of documentation, or he was a, a rock star in, uh, in Russia, I mean, this guy was famous, uh, famous pilot in the newspapers. Uh, he said he was as famous as any uh, music rock star is uh, to us in the United States. He was famous. When when Chernobyl blew up, he was in a helicopter, and he was having to fly over and test the dosimeters, you know, with a dosimeter and everything. And when he flew over the first time uh, at uh, 500 feet over Chernobyl, it pegged out before he ever got close to it on his dosimeter. So then he turned around, went back, came over a thousand feet or a thousand meters, and uh, and it pegged out again. Finally, he got the thing as high as he could get it, you know, and not fall out of the sky, and uh, and it still pegged out. So when he he knew he was in trouble when he got back on the ground. And they took his boots away and his clothes, and they burned his clothes and took his boot and wouldn't give his boots back to him. And then they sent him for three months to a resort on the uh, uh, on the Black Sea. So and so then he, he knew he was in deep trouble. But the, here he is uh, on the right on the right right here, uh, and there's the aircraft, and it actually flew the shuttle, uh, and and he defected in San Diego, California, and you're not going to believe this if I told you, but on his, in his shipment, on his plane, when he defected, he had three yachts. He had Canada's yacht, New Zealand's yacht, and Australia's yacht for the America's Cup race in San Diego in the ship, in the, in, in this aircraft, in that aircraft. Mm. So, we could, we could fill a week of Alex stories. That's right. Yeah, he's an amazing guy. Uh, other aces in our group, Bill Hardy uh, had six and a half victories and he was ace in a day. Uh, most of them were uh, were kamikazes, you know, There's, or several of them were kamikazes. Some of them were either taken off or landing, uh, but he still had, uh, he was ace in a day. Uh, Bob Winks, uh, flew P-51s, had five and a half victories. Uh, ben Drew, also in a P-51, had six victories. Uh, Bud Miller right here uh, is, flew P-38s and had five victories. And uh, marvelous individuals. Others that we can't omit as we're getting down to the end here, uh, one of our founding members right here was Bob Wagner. He was the lead pilot for Sears and uh, uh, the, the first flight that he flew was the president of Sears. Was the president of Sears. And, and uh, he was going to Wilmington. And so Wagner flew into Wilmington, North Carolina, and he was supposed to be in Wilmington, Delaware. Oh. And, it was, and it was pitch dark. And they drove up, and they, they landed, you know, and he got out, and he looked around, and he didn't see any cars or anything, you know. Anybody to greet him, and he said, uh, "He said, sir. He said, I guess they're a little bit late, you know." He said, "Late hell." He said, "They just called me." 
he said they're, they're uh, we're supposed to be in Wilmington, uh, Delaware. And so that was Wagner's first flight. That, 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 that was the look on his face. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, another thing about uh, Wagner is I had the opportunity to drive him to Old Bull Pilots. He suffered from Alzheimer's. And I had the opportunity to drive him to Old Bull Pilots you know, on a regular basis every, uh, every Wednesday. And Janelle's part of the story. She got me in trouble. Okay. So you? yeah. So so I I go there and he eats half of his meal, which I'm paying for, right? And and then he falls asleep. And only half of his meal is eaten. So I said, Janelle, here's what I want you to do, honey. I said, bring him half meal on his plate and half of it on my plate. You know, and then when he falls asleep, I'll eat mine. You won't know the difference. She said, "Oh, that's a great idea." So she did that. So then all of a sudden, we got a new girl, and I'm over talking to Jean and a couple of guys at their booth. You know, and the girl comes in, and I, well, I place my order and everything, and so she sets my meal down where I'm sitting, and then an empty plate in front of in front of him. See? And, and I go back over there, and he says to me, he says, he says, T.G., I dozed off, he said, and some son of a bitch ate my meal. <laughs> and I said, I think you're looking at him, you know, and I, so, I gave him my full meal, and I said, boy, you guys screwed up on that deal. <laughs> I think I was on vacation. Yeah, right, I think you were too. That's Bob Wagner, though. Uh, Byron Clampett, uh, uh, he was uh, forced into a desert landing in, uh, uh, in uh, North Africa and, uh, and he was surrounded by Bedouin uh, camel drivers uh, when, he, uh, when he did his forced desert landing and uh, had to bribe himself to, to, to safety. Ron Nash, B-17 pilot, shot down over Hamburg uh, and uh, broke his back. Uh, was taken care of in a German hospital, but it was during the time that we were firebombing Hamburg. So that was a tough time for him. Jack Templeton, the U.S. Air Force tanker pilot, uh, flew filming missions for the movie The Gathering of the Eagles. With uh, Rock Hudson and all that. Just yeah. Wonderful movie. Yeah, terrific movie. Uh, Bobby Trout, this is Bobby Trout right here. Uh, she was a pilot and uh, 1922 and the first and set the endurance record for uh, uh, for flights at that particular time. And Janelle just couldn't bring the picture. I I have a lot of stuff in my house, but Bobby flew in like the powder puff dirty derbies in the 20s. Yes. She flew with Amelia Earhart. She flew with mm -hmm. uh, Puncher Barnes and. Yeah. Uh, her, the reason her name is Bobby, it wasn't her given name, it's because of the haircut. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. And we had, we, we, had a, we had another uh, gal in our organization, <coughs> Charlie. Remember Charlie? Oh, Charlie, Charlie and, and Charlie. And, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and same thing. She was flying aircraft over to Europe, you know, and she would fly into bases and, uh, and they would, uh, uh, they would be, uppity about a woman, female pilot, you know, landing at their base, you know, to fly these fighter, pilots, uh, fighter planes over to Europe. And, uh, and so she, she changed her name to Charlie, you know, and, and then, uh, then it wasn't a problem. <laughs> that, 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 that. Uh, Bob Stofi. Okay, so this is our last slide, then we yeah. need to leave time for questions. Okay, all right. Bob Stofi uh, wrote this book right here, Clear It Hot. Uh, that's the term. Uh, any fighter pilots in the group? No? One, two, yeah. Well, you know cleared hot is uh, when the forward air controller is, is clearing you to go ahead and drop your, your weapons, you know, drop your weapons or straight or whatever you're doing. Bob Sophie uh, wrote the book Cleared Hot. He was a forward air controller in OV-10s, and he wrote this book uh, that you see up here in the right-hand corner. Court Stark uh, is right here. He was killed in a motorcycle accident between Kingman and uh, Wickenburg over in Arizona during a rainstorm, and uh, and, uh, and and we he uh, he set the motorcycle down and skidded, 
but he skidded into the other lanes and two cars hit him. And uh, so we lost court. But uh, uh, besides the, uh, the witches that I was telling you about on Court Star, he was the one that, uh, that was with me on, the, on that fateful uh, meeting. Court has four distinguished flying crosses and he had three purple hearts and uh, he was shot down uh, half a dozen times in helicopters. He flew uh, Hueys. Uh, and on his right is uh, Brigadier General Jim Gresci, right here. And uh, Jim was a forward air controller in O2s, and he also uh, was the commanding officer of the Wisconsin National Guard, and they flew uh, A-10 Warthog, Warthogs. And, uh, and he was also a tanker pilot. And I know there's a couple tanker pilots right there. There's one. And, uh, he flew tanker pilots uh, out of Budapest, as as uh, as you did. <clears throat> Dean Moorhead was a flight instructor for Werner von Braun, and uh, and uh, as most of you know, Werner von Braun, uh, besides the work that he did in the uh, missiles, uh, uh, he was the head of NASA. He headed up NASA for um, uh, a decade. Uh, anything else? Hank, Hank Goltz, uh, a co-pilot on TWA, and this uh, TWA uh, number two hijacked in 1972. Uh, they shot the they shot the hijacker on the plane, and uh, and so they did get hijacked. <laughs> but uh, that's the story on Hank. Hank flew uh, 105s in Vietnam, and also uh, uh, flew 105s in Wittenberg, Germany. So uh, he, he spent a lot of time in Europe. Was a bachelor in Europe in, the, in his heyday. Great stories. Okay, uh, I think that covers everything. Uh, let's open it up to questions for either Susie or Janelle or Jean or myself. Just fire away. Anybody? Okay. Okay. Uh, do you know Frank Ritchie? He's a, a member of the, your group in Ocean Society. I know him. Uh -huh. I mean, I know he's a member. Yeah. He taught me how to fly when I was in high school in 1956. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Two years ago. Uh, two and a half years ago. Yeah. 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 I went to a couple of Oceanside meetings, but he was never there. Uh -huh. yeah, so I never saw yeah. He was him. seriously ill right yeah. at the end. Yeah. 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 So right. you would have missed him then. Yeah. Question. You remember? Or do you know Jack Casey? Uh, in Oceanside, uh, flew P-51s, uh, rolled in on a 262, and his guns froze up. So he he, he used to, he was he's a lawyer now deceased in Oceanside. I started my practice with back in you know a long time ago. Uh, I heard I, I think he rammed it, didn't he, or something? Well, he didn't get it. He didn't get a victory for it because he said his guns froze up yeah. uh, at, at altitude. And I thought he broke off the engagement, but I, yeah, yeah. a long time ago, I don't remember. But he no, I, I know he didn't knock it down, but uh, yeah. I, think, I think he did more damage to his plane than he did to the ME-262. Interesting story. Question? For Janelle and Susie, have, have any of these daring Duke pilots ever given you a ride in an airplane? No. No? no. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I know. Hey, no, 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 no. Thanks I, a hell of a lot. I, <laughs> they, were, they, were, they spent the night over here. And they were going to invite us over to the room. You could forget that. <laughs> I, I um, was taken up in a small plane in, in my teenage years by, um, oh heck, what was his name? It was Pancho Barnes's son. My husband was taking flying lessons. And so they took me up in a small plane. I don't like small planes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not real happy with the big ones, but I don't <laughs> like the little ones. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Just a quick one about the gathering of eagles. I was flying a transition in the constellation out of Sacramento. Not the ones with the big bellies on the Sunday we could take enlisted persons along and they were making that movie up there, so I picked it. On an oil change and so on. It was on a Sunday, so we 
children and made a landing and they were at lunch and uh, it was uh, Rockets and others and we really enjoyed uh, you know, talking to the movie people back in those yeah. days. 63 or 64, just a little horseshit about that. Yeah, that was a fabulous movie yeah. and, uh, and a great filming, yeah. Uh, well, here's our, here's our group. Uh, anybody recognize this fellow right here? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Anybody, anybody recognize him? Yeah. <laughs> he was the one that was responsible for uh, bringing old bull pilots to Palm Desert. Yeah. Somebody knew his name. Yeah. Who, who knew his name? Anybody? Pete huh? Pete Madison? Pete Anderson? Madison. Madison. Yeah. Uh -huh. Pete Madison. Okay. We're going to blow up his name tag and, and verify that. So you better be right. So in 19, in uh, February of 1997, uh, we, uh, between, between that date and uh, and then 15 years later, we were up to 65 individuals. And, and just like uh, Gene indicated, you know, we have 400 uh, listed. <clears throat> and, and on any given uh, on any given Wednesday, from seven to nine, you're welcome to come, pop in on us. We're not as formal as you people. You know, uh, this is how we start our meetings. Listen up, you sons of bitches! <laughs> we don't have a microphone where we tap and say, okay, we're going to salute the collars or right, 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 girl? Very important. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and I hate to pick on these two lovely ladies, you know, but typically when they come over to a table, you know, and they're handing down the place, man, Barbara, they're handing down the place and they say, you know, okay, two over easy and bacon and, and, uh, and, uh, and sausage. And uh, uh, two white, uh, white only, and uh, and hash browns, and a cup of fruit. And uh, this guy says, uh, "No, I didn't order that. Oh, eat it anyway. For crying out loud, eat the damn thing anyway. What a pain in the neck. You're an old, old pilots. You know, is that is that the way you guys handle it? Well, I love the fact that you say too over easy and sausage, and the guy goes mine, and so you're thinking, no, it's not, but you set it down anyway, yeah. and then you go too over." Bacon, and he goes, Well, no, that's fine. And then this place trains. Yeah. Okay, well, I think it gets to the point anyway, where we got to know pretty much what each pilot ordered, so we would just go to the computer and start putting orders in without even taking orders. Yeah, how long are we not even telling you? You know, it's yeah. like what everybody wants. And, and then all of a sudden, you decide you want something, yeah. you decide you want something different, and it's, and, and, it's and, uh, and it's like, no. Get what you get. Eat the damn thing, eat the damn thing, and you any other questions before I turn it off? Okay. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, we'll see you next time.